What happened in the garden? Another familiar story, Adam and Eve were created and placed in the Garden of Eden. The only command they were given was not to eat the fruit of one tree. Eve meets a serpent, and it convinces her to eat this fruit. This causes God to punish them and banish both of them from paradise forever. In probably one of the most popular stories in our history, we are again led by what most have always assumed. As in the previous gap theory of creation section, we are to read from verses that, initially, were written in Hebrew. The people who translated this section of Genesis were probably taught the same story as we see above, and they probably used corresponding English words which would have best fit their assumptions. As we delve into the original Hebrew and other related ancient texts associated, we might begin to see the possibility of different elements to this story emerging. What if there was a little more to the conversation between the serpent and Eve? Could there have been some elements to this story that were left out? Often, obscure details of the biblical narrative are not explained, for whatever reason. There may have been something left out of this story that was so dramatic that it's almost impossible. First off, the serpent speaks. Many, over the years, might have wondered why Eve wasn't more surprised that an animal decided to go and talk to her. As we dig deeper, however, the answer might become apparent. The at least in the past, serpent may not have been the same type of creature we picture today. It might not even have been an animal, but a humanoid-looking being. A great deal of ancient written evidence suggests this serpent was a serpentine, or serpent-like, the angel who previously fell from grace. As mentioned in the Giants of Scripture section, there were angels fashioned around this same time as the above creation of Adam, to help him out in his daily garden chores. We get a hint of this in the Bible, and again, when he God bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Hebrew, 1-6, KJV, it seems there, at least, was some in his vicinity. According to ancient accounts, when some of these angels discovered how much preferential treatment God had given to the man, these angels complained. We may, in the Bible, get a hint to the conversation between these angels and the Almighty, in regards to their dissatisfaction of Adam, Psalms, 8-4 What is man, that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man, that thou visitest him? 5 For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. 6 Thou maddest him to have dominion of the works of thy hands. God, however, would not put up with a lot of their disagreement, and eventually would cause them to fall, losing their heavenly positions, as well as further being made submissive to Adam. There was a massive garden in which God desired man to work in and maintain. This, of course, was the Garden of Eden, and Adam was designated to be the manager at General 2-5, 7-8. One ancient source, the Book of the Cave of Treasures stated that, in it the Garden of Eden dwelt the souls of the righteous. The souls of sinners dwelt in a deep place, outside Eden. It has been said that at least two groups of angels might have been punished for this disobedience, and cast down to earth with Satan possibly being among them. Other ancient written evidence shows that there could have even been other human beings on the planet at this time, beyond just Adam and Eve, also designated to help work the fields in and around the garden, as well as help in the domestication of nearby animals, we read more about this in Birds and Beasts. Some of these fallen angels may have been designated to work outside of the garden, some inside, most assigned various roles of leadership over the human workers around them. But, regardless of their authority on the earth, all of these fallen angels were still under the ultimate control of that one man, Adam. Many of these terrestrial angels, since their fall, assumed a form that looked like any man around them, complete with the same hands, feet, and overall body shape of a human being. They lived on the earth just like everyone else, with just a couple of differences. They could have still maintained their shining appearance, as one might picture a typical angel to have. Satan, as mentioned before, could have also been one of those who complained to God and felt this same way. Unlike some of those other angels, who had dropped to earth and were able to take on a human-like form, Satan was purely a spiritual angel. He did not fall in the same way. If he was to make any change on the earth, he had to find a body to possess, to be able to act like a human being. And that's just what he did. According to various ancient sources, Satan was one of the angels most adamant about wanting Adam out of this position of power, and wanted to convince other fellow angels to attempt an overthrow. The serpent, one of these other fallen angels, volunteered his services. Their target? To seduce Eve. Together, Satan and the serpent wanted to cause her to disobey that one and only law they had, not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan, told the serpent, I hear that you are wiser than all the other animals or people, for Adam gives food to all the animals, thus also, to you. 
When then, all the animals come to bow down before Adam, you also come to bow down. You were created before him, and you bow down before this little one. And why do you eat food inferior to Adam's and his spouses and not the food of paradise? But come and hearken to me so that we may have Adam expelled from the wall of paradise just as we are on the outside. Be a sheath for me and I will speak to the woman through your mouth a word by which we will trick them. Book of Adam 44 16.3 a 16.4 Satan, then, was allowed to possess the serpent to aid him in doing his bidding. If they collectively could make Adam and Eve sin, they felt they could get out of their new, subservient positions. As we see from the above, a deal seemed to be in the works. And why would this particular angel, the serpent, want to help Satan? There seemed to be one more benefit, the serpent seemed interested in, maybe, with Adam overthrown, he could get one of the richest and most luscious fruits in the garden, Eve herself. Satan knew the serpent was now flesh and blood and had thoughts and desires similar to a human being. There may have also been some curiosity about the sexual experience inside of this serpent's mind, as well. We know, according to the Bible, that angels can make themselves appear to be human. They can eat, sleep, and otherwise live like any other human being. They are no longer in the heavenly realm, why can't these fallen angels also contemplate this side of human existence? If this was the case, a good number of ancient sources tell us that Satan utilized these thoughts of the serpent to his advantage. The serpent met Eve. Through him, Satan whispered his lies to Eve, suggesting that she believed all of what he was saying. Even though she initially didn't want to eat the fruit, the words coming out of the serpent's mouth were almost too much for her to negate. They, together, were very seductive. Beyond these words, beyond trickery and charm, Satan and the serpent may have had one more ace up their sleeve. They may have had something else in store for this woman, to cement their seduction, sexual seduction. A good number of ancient written texts allude to this. As one ancient the source stated, the serpent was inflamed by Eve, which means she could have been made red or embarrassed throughout their sexual conversation. The Bible as well states that serpent beguiled Eve, General 3.13. The word beguile can also mean wholly seduced. Did the serpent wholly seduce Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, first with terms, then with actual, physical seduction? Even though the Bible doesn't expressly state it, that doesn't mean something else couldn't have occurred at the same time. On top of it all, if she was also seduced in this way, and then naturally, she may have been able to use these same techniques on Adam, which, according to many, is how it all went down. Both, it seems, succumbed to temptation, whatever this temptation might have been. And they both would also eat of the fruit of that tree of knowledge, the one tree they were not permitted to do so. They ultimately disobeyed God, their world became defiled, and their fall had begun. After this, the Bible says that Adam and Eve now felt ashamed and took fig leaves to cover their private parts General 3-7. Now, why would they rush to cover these? Was this, maybe, a reflection of something they did with them? This whole idea of sexual seduction is not new. There is quite a bit of ancient evidence which supports this. According to the Bible and other sources, the serpent had different names, among them Nashash and Azazel. Azazel, before his fall, was considered to be the strong one of God, one of the strongest angels of the heavens. Yet, when he complained about Adam, he was reduced to just an ordinary overseer of an earthly garden. Yet now, everything had changed. Satan and the fallen serpent claimed victory. They swooped the absolute authority of Adam out from under him. Adam and Eve had indeed fallen apart from their God, physically and spiritually. What about these affairs? Could the unthinkable also have happened? What if something was resulting from this sexual union between Eve and the serpent? There are various sources, even the Bible, that might point to an offspring coming from this sexual exchange. When God punished Eve for her sin, it's interesting to note how many of her punishments revolved around sexuality, childbirth, and motherhood. Why? Could there be something directly reflected in the seduction they were engulfed in? Subscribe to see next video Cain, Seed of the Serpent.